The law of Pearson III method is described in Bulletin 17b, Guidelines for Determining Flood Flow Frequency of the U.S. Geological Survey. The steps in the application of the law of Pearson III method are the following. 1. Assemble the annual flood series X sub I. 2. Calculate the logarithms of the annual flood series. 3. Calculate the mean, standard deviation, and skew coefficient of the logarithms. 4. Using the double entry table shown here, calculate the frequency factor for each of several chosen return periods or probability levels as a function of skew coefficient. If necessary, use linear interpolation on the skew coefficient to calculate the applicable frequency factor. 5. Calculate the logarithms of the flood discharges using the following frequency formula, in which log Q sub J is the logarithm of the flood discharge J, Y bar is the mean of the logarithms, K sub J is the frequency factor, and S sub Y is the standard deviation of the logarithms. 6. Calculate the flood discharges as the anti-logarithms of the log Q sub J values. 7. Plot the flood discharges against probabilities on log probability paper with discharges on the log scale. 8. The log Pearson 3 fit to the data is obtained by linking the points with a smooth curve. For skew coefficient equal to 0, the log Pearson 3 fit reduces to a straight line. This table shows an example of a flood series and its calculated plotting positions. A log Pearson 3 fit to this data is shown in this table. Columns 1 and 2 show the selected return periods and associated probabilities, respectively. Column 3 shows the frequency factors taken from the table. For this example, the skew coefficient of the logarithms is C sub S sub Y equal minus 0.116. Column 4 shows the logarithms of the flood discharges. Column 5 shows the calculated flood discharges. A plot of the log Pearson 3 fit for the preceding example is shown here. The extreme value type 1 distribution also known as the Gumbel method, or EV1, is in use throughout the world. The method is a special case of the three-parameter distribution described in the British Flood Studies Report. The cumulative density function of the Gumbel method is the double exponential function, in which f of x is the probability of non-exceedance. In flood frequency analysis, the probability of interest is the probability of exceedance that is, the complementary probability to f of x, defined as follows. The return period is the reciprocal of the probability of exceedance. Solving for y, in the Gumbel method, values of flood discharge are obtained from the frequency formula. The frequency factor k is evaluated with the frequency formula as follows in which y is the Gumbel reduced variant, a function of return period, and y bar sub n and sigma sub n are the mean and standard deviation of the Gumbel variant. The mean and standard deviation of the Gumbel variant are a function of record length, as shown in this table. For k equals zero, the flood discharge is equal to the mean annual flood. Also, for k equals zero, the Gumbel variant is equal to its mean. As the record length approaches infinity, 
the mean of the Gumbel variant approaches the value of the Euler constant, that is 0.5572. For y equal 0.5572, the return period is 2.33 years. Therefore, the return period of the mean annual flood is 2.33 years. Solving for k, replacing this value of k in the flood discharge equation leads to The steps in the application of the Gumbel method are the following. 1. Assemble the flood series X sub i. 2. Determine the mean and standard deviation of the flood series. 3. Use this table to determine the mean and standard deviation of the Gumbel variant as a function of record length. 4. Select several return periods and associated probabilities. 5. Calculate the Gumbel variance for the selected return periods. 6. Calculate the flood discharges Q sub i equal X sub i. 7. Plot values of Q against Y and or T or P on Gumbel probability paper and draw a straight line through the points. Gumbel probability paper is an arithmetic scale of Gumbel variant in the abscissas and an arithmetic scale of flood discharge in the ordinates. It is customary to superimpose a scale of return period in or probability on the arithmetic scale of Gumbel variant as shown here. This table shows an example of a flood series in its calculated plotting positions. A Gumbel fit to this data is shown in this table. Columns 1 and 2 show the selected return periods and associated probabilities, respectively. Column 3 shows the Gumbel reduced variant. Column 4 shows the flood discharges. The Green-Gordon plotting position formula is preferred for use with the Gumbel method. The Green-Gordon formula is In 1968, the Hydrology Subcommittee of the U.S. Water Resources Council tested the goodness of fit of six frequency distributions. These were 1. Log Normal, 2. Log Pearson 3, 3. Hazen, 4. Gamma, 5. Gumbel, and 6. Log Gumbel. The study showed that the first three distributions had smaller average deviations than the other three. Since the Hazen distribution is a type of log normal, and the log normal is a special case of the log Pearson 3, the committee concluded that the log Pearson 3 distribution was the most appropriate and recommended it for general use. The British Flood Studies Report of 1975 concluded that the three parameter distributions, that is, log Pearson 3 and generalized extreme value, or GEV, provided a better fit than the two parameter distributions, such as log normal and gumbel. However, the same report noted that the use of two parameter distributions in connection with short record lengths often leads to results that are more sensible than those obtained by fitting three parameter distributions. The accuracy of flood estimates based on frequency analysis deteriorates for values of probability much greater than the record length. This is due to sampling errors and to the fact that the underlying distribution is not known with certainty. Alternative procedures that complement the information provided by flood frequency analysis are recommended. These procedures include flood estimates from precipitation and comparison with catchments of similar hydrologic characteristics. This table shows the relation between the various types of analysis used in flood frequency studies. For short record lengths, the three methods complement each other, 
while for long record lengths, the statistical method is applicable.